This video will discuss the allowed energies of the particle in a ring quantum mechanical model system. So from our previous video, we have a model system for a particle in a ring. So this particle is free to travel anywhere in this uh, purple circle that I've indicated here, which is in the xy plane. So the way we do that is by fixing the radius from the origin and fixing the angle from the z-axis to be 90 degrees. And then our particle can be measured by its angle in the xy plane, which is the spherical polar coordinate phi, which can go from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 360 degrees. So we also developed our Schrodinger equation in the previous video, where our Hamiltonian acting on psi equals e psi. So that's minus h bar squared over 2 times the mass of the particle times the radius of our circle, radius of our ring times the second derivative of the wave function with respect to phi. I think I need a d phi squared there. Let's throw that in. All right, okay, equals e phi. So now I'm going to rearrange this to where this uh, second derivative is by itself on the left-hand side, multiplying by the inverse of this value. So I have d squared psi d phi squared equals negative quantity 2mr squared e over h bar squared times psi. So what we have here is that the second derivative of a function is equal to a negative constant times the function again. So we have 2 times the mass is constant, the radius is constant, the energy is constant, h bar is constant. So everything inside this term is constant and everything is also going to be positive as well. So this is a positive constant that we've got. Okay, so when you have a function that looks like this, the second derivative of a function equals a negative constant squared times the function. From a differential equations course, the typical kinds of solutions for this behavior, you could either say are, kind, are sines and cosines, or you could say are complex exponentials like e to the ikx. So psi of phi here, one uh, applicable solution would be psi of phi equals e so the plus or minus i k phi. All right, so if we take the derivative of this, you get the same function pulling out an i times k from the chain rule. If you take the second derivative, you get another one. So this function times i k quantity squared. So i squared is negative 1. That's our negative. And then k squared is k squared. So this fits that when we take the second derivative of it, we get the same function times minus i k squared. All right, so matching up terms here, um, k has to be the square root of everything here. So these two terms are squared. We can factor those out. So k equals the radius over h bar times the square root of everything left inside, 2 times m times e. All right, so what else can we use to try to help us in solving uh, this further for the value of k so we can get what e is? Right, so we know that in this ring, the system is periodic. So if we go around 360 degrees, we're going to end up back in the same spot again. So our wave function better be the same as it was 360 degrees ago. So we can represent that mathematically by the following. Psi of phi plus 2 pi, 2 pi being 360 degrees, equals psi of phi. All right, so if we substitute this in, to our expression here, substitute in phi plus 2 pi for phi. We have e to the i k phi equals e to the i k phi plus 2 pi, which we can distribute this exponent and then factor it to be that equals e to the i k phi times e to the i 2 pi k. So now we have this quantity here, which is equal to this quantity here. And since both of these sides have to be equal, that means everything in this term needs to be equal to 1. So we have 1 equals e to the i 2 pi k. And now what else can we use to try to solve this for k? Well, we can use Euler's formula. That's e to the i kx equals cosine kx plus i sine kx. So e to the i 2 pi k equals cosine 2 pi k plus i sine 2 pi k. 
Now if we look at this, this value on, on the right hand side here has to equal the value on the left, 1. And since this, side, this term is imaginary, it has an i in it, this term has to be 0. And since this term is real, this term has to be equal to 1. Alright, so we have sine of 2 pi k has to be 0, and cosine of 2 pi k has to equal 1. So we're asking ourselves, what value of sine is such that we get a sine of 0? Well, sine starts at 0 at 0, goes up to 1 at 90, goes back to 0 at 180 degrees, or pi radiant, goes down to minus 1, and then at 2 pi is back up to 0. So at every value of pi, our sine is going to equal 0. So the arc sine of 0 equals n pi, which is equal to our 2 pi k inside there. So n pi, where n is some integer, 0, 1, 2, is going to equal 2 pi k. So this is all coming out to be pretty similar to our derivation for the particle in a box thus far. All right, we also have that cosine of 2 pi k has to equal 1. So where does cosine equal 1? Well, it equals 1 at 0 degrees. Then it goes to 0, minus 1, 0, 1. It's back at 1 again at 2 pi uh, radians, 360 degrees. So the arc cosine of 0, the uh, places where we're, actually I believe that should be arc cosine of 1, much better. So we have the arc cosine of 1 equals 2n pi, which equals 2k pi. So from our two equations here, we have from our sine equation that k is going to equal n over 2, and from our cosine equation that k has to equal n. So from our sine equation, uh, k has to at least be some half integer, and from the cosine equation, k needs to be an integer. So these are both compatible when the, when the latter is true. So k is going to equal n, this integer here. So we have n, some integer, equals r over h bar, times the square root of 2me. So squaring both sides and multiplying by h bar over r. We have h bar squared n squared over r squared equals 2me. Or finally, that our energy as a function of the quantum number n is equal to h bar squared n squared over 2 times the mass of the particle times the radius of the ring squared which if we take this in terms of h instead of h bar would also equal h squared n squared over 8 pi squared m r squared where n can now equal 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc any integer is a valid solution of this equation so this looks pretty similar to the particle in a box we have the h squared n squared r squared m that's all pretty similar the only difference is that uh, we have an extra pi squared in here um, from the fact that our system is going to be periodic. And also that our n, which starts at 1 for particle in a box and goes up, is now not restricted in that sense. It can be any possible integer, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. So our ground state will end up being singly degenerate, um, and then all of our other states will be doubly degenerate because plus or minus 1 squared is 1, plus or minus 2 squared is 4, plus or minus 3 squared is 9. Each of them is going to have a paired value, which is going to have the same energy as it. And we'll explore more of that as we get deeper into this chapter on particle in a ring, but for now, these are our energies, which are pretty close to the particle in a box, except for those very small exceptions that we've noted.